morning to you all. Thank you so much for joining us here at Gadsden State Community College. Uh, we're going to be talking today about understanding the benefits of a community college that is part of a study state consortium and things that you should consider when you're choosing. I'm sure many of you have heard a lot of things about community colleges before, but we're going to be looking at something that's just a little bit associated with that, but a little bit different. But before I begin, I'm going to introduce myself and introduce my guests to you. I am Becky Duckett. I am the Director of International Programs and Alabama Language Institute at Gadsden State Community College. And as you might guess, we are in Alabama in the USA. And I have a couple of students joining me and I'm going to let them introduce themselves briefly. And then we're going to get into the program of the information that I'll be sharing. They will take a little break. And when we get to the end, they will be able to answer some questions and help you understand their experience here at Gadsden State. So uh, we'll begin with the top of the screen for me. Diego, would you introduce yourself? Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. Well, my name is Diego Romero. I'm from Bogota, Colombia. I'm here, like, I, I've been here two years and my major is business. Okay, thank you. And Chi? Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Chi, and I'm from Taiwan. And this is my second year at Gaston State, and I'm, I'm majoring in general study, and I plan to transfer after I finish my degree at Gaston State. Fantastic. Thank you guys so much. Now it's your turn to just take a break, and I'll do a little bit of talking, and you don't have to sit there and smile at everybody while I'm talking. <laughs> okay. Um, I wanted you to understand a few extra things about the two plus two model. I know many people have been talking on Facebook Live and a lot of places about the community college and the two plus two model. If it's the first time you've heard about it, I'll explain briefly. And that is that in the United States, we have a system of community colleges where students can go and take the first two years of their four-year degree, then transfer to a university and finish. And there are advantages to this. Of course, you may have heard one of those, of course, is cost. Because community colleges in the United States are generally much less expensive than the universities. Also, uh, it's a good place to become accustomed to the U.S. education system, to become comfortable with it in a, a smaller environment, usually smaller class sizes, where you can gain confidence and then be very successful in the university when you transfer. Also, many states have opportunities for transfer that are established between community colleges and the four-year institutions. So it becomes a very nice cost-effective option for students. But one thing many people may not have said, but I would like you to make note of, is that after you go to the four-year institution and you graduate with a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science, your degree will be from that university. So no one who sees your degree will ask, did you go to a community college? They just see that you graduated from that four-year institution. So while we value community colleges very much in the United States, and they can be a big help, about 50% of U.S. students are now choosing to begin at a community college. It will not be any different when you graduate from the university from students who went all four years there. So there is no bias against anyone who attends a community college, but it's a smart student who saves the money by doing so. But I want to talk about another aspect of community colleges and universities that you may not have heard about. I think choosing a community college is a very wise decision, but it's also wise to consider the state that, this, that the community college is located in. Because some states, not all, but some states in the United States have a study state organization, which means for us that is study Alabama. So it could be any other state who might have this. It would be study and then the name of that state. But I want to talk to you about the advantages of going to a school which is part of a study state consortium. This is a group of colleges, education institutions at all levels actually, who 
want to work together, who want to collaborate, because they understand that when one school benefits from students coming, other schools do as well. It's for the good of our state and for the good of the students if we not compete with each other, but rather cooperate with each other. And this becomes a very attractive thing for community college seeking students. Because when you've got a state uh, that is collaborating already, then you know that the relationships are already strong between the community college and a university within that state that you might choose to apply to. Also, with some state universities and community colleges, there may be an arrangement whereby the student can automatically transfer to that school. This is usually arranged by a special agreement, but an example would be that you would attend the community college, and if you keep a certain grade point average, when you graduate, you can automatically go to a school that you would have jointly applied to two years before. You, they would possibly waive your application fee and you would automatically be accepted there. If you don't want to do that because you're not sure about the four-year institution yet, that's still okay because within the consortium, we have a clear understanding of the courses you should take in the community college in order to be able to transfer smoothly and easily to the universities that we collaborate with. There are also uh, some automatic scholarships which might be part of this. Uh, for instance, the students you, will, you have been introduced to are strong students and they may belong to Phi Theta Kappa, which is an honor society uh, which allows students to be part of a group of students who make, who are high achieving, Hello. make good grades, and want to give back to the community. And so this is a very nice uh, arrangement also because uh, this gives a student double savings uh, because not only might they take advantage of one of these automatic transfer scholarships, but they might also be eligible for trans uh, scholarships for students who've done very well in the school. And we expect that you would want to do well when you come here. And that is why we come to school every day, is to help our students succeed. That's what we love most. I'd like to show you uh, now a graphic. If I can get my screen to share, we will get with that. And I would like you to uh, see a graphic that we have about how the, this works together. This is a pathway uh, through the United States educational system here in Alabama. It gives you an example of how things work. You will see on the left, there are K through 12 schools. This is the usual education that students have. Well, within Study Alabama, which you can see located in the bottom corner, within Study Alabama, we have two K through 12 schools who are part of this consortia, which means that they can accept students on F1 student visas here. And sometimes students come there first and then move through the system. Other times students may not have that background and they may feel they need to improve their English in order to be strong enough to be successful in the college and university system. Them. And so there are schools within the Study Alabama Consortium which offer ESL. And these are formal programs and the names of those schools are found there under ESL. You may note that Gadsden State Community College, which is the school that I represent, is the only community college in Alabama which does have a formal ESL program. But we work very closely with other community colleges in the state. And if they have a student who needs ESL, then they will refer them to us. And that student can come here, live on campus, get their strong English skills, and then they're free to transfer back to the school they prefer or a school that has a program we don't have, but we can work very closely with other community colleges within the state. And Alabama has about 24 community colleges, so there are a lot to choose from in different regions within our state. Once a student has the ESL they need, either by going through a program such as ours or by getting the necessary TOEFL score, which for the community colleges in the U.S., the required TOEFL is 500 on the paper or 61 on the internet-based. Uh, we also accept IELTS 
5.5, and we accept STEP ICANN as well. Um, but these can be decided by the school, but the community colleges all have the same standard of English level for acceptance. The universities have different numbers that they require on the tests, and you can find that out individually with them. Many students choose to go to the two-year college, and so that's where the community colleges fit in. And within Study Alabama, you can see here on the graphic that there are four community colleges that participate in this collaboration with the other schools in Alabama who are members as well. The four-year universities uh, who participate are also listed there. That is where the members offer a four-year degree. They accept transfers from community colleges throughout the state. And from there, students can pursue their specific uh, degree that they want to get and graduate with that degree. And then there are also universities within the state of Alabama who are part of Study Alabama that offer graduate degrees, master's and PhD level. Uh, a wide variety of programs are available through those. Another important thing to note is that we, under the U.S. visa system at this time, students are allowed to do OPT, which is optional practical training. One reason you might want to choose a community college is that if you do so, you get one extra opportunity for optional practical training. That means that whenever you complete a degree, you are eligible to apply. And optional practical training means you can apply for a job in the field you studied and work for a year. It gives you work experience to build upon your education, and it also gives you an opportunity to earn a little bit of money and save a little for the next step. When you finish the bachelor's degree, as long as you finish the degree, you again have that opportunity. And the same is true with every degree that you complete. It's not true if you transfer before completing the degree, but it is a nice option that many of our students like to consider because they like having work experience and it looks very good on a job application and also on a college or university application to show that you have practical experience. So let's move on. This graphic can be available to you. You can email me if you like at Gadsden State. So let's talk about <clears throat> what students should consider. Uh, Hillary, we don't need that anymore. Thank you very much. Um, let's talk about the things a student might consider and I think should consider when they're choosing a community college. You may not be familiar with community colleges, you may not have them, or they may be different in your home country, but what kinds of things should you look at? Many of those things are the same that you would look at if you were choosing a university, but I'd like to go through some of them and give some examples. Um, first of all, I think you should consider the quality of life that you can expect to have at the school you plan to attend. And this could include things like, is it in a small city or a large city? You would know what you prefer. You also might ask yourself, well, what is the geography like? And what is the climate like? Maybe you're from a country that is normally very, very warm and you're not accustomed to cold weather. You might want to go to a place that is fairly warm or you might want to try cold weather, in which case you would want to select a place that is sure to have snow in the winter because that's always very exciting with our students. But you also need to consider what is nearby because you choose a school, but you also want to know what is within your uh, range of experience there. And sometimes students choose to go to a community college in one region and then deliberately choose to go to the university in another region because they like to get a broad experience while they're in the U.S. And certainly that's entirely up to you. But think about the quality of life that you would like to have in your time in the U.S. Also, uh, cost. It's always a big deal for everybody. Everybody needs to use their money wisely. And I'm sure you've heard people say that community colleges provide a great way to save money on your education in the United States. This is true because it is actually, in many states, a fraction of the amount that the university charges for tuition. For example, in the state of Alabama, I averaged the cost of a credit hour 
for all of the major universities, particularly those that are in the study Alabama group. And when I came up with that average number, it was obvious that the cost for one credit hour at the community college is only one third as much as the cost for one credit hour at a university. And so this just demonstrates in numbers how much of a savings you can really have by paying for community college tuition two years and then being ready to pay the greater tuition for the university experience that you want. Also, the um, scholarship opportunities to the university are better if you have attended a community college. Let me explain this a little bit. Say you are a very good student and you want to go to a university. And so when you apply to that university from your home country, you want to be there for four years and you want a scholarship. You apply for the scholarship, but imagine how many people are applying as first time freshmen to that university. And so all of them are going, I want a scholarship. But the university will only have so many scholarships to give. How can they choose? How can they know which applicant is going to be a strong student? How can they know which applicant is going to adjust to the United States well and be able to excel from the beginning? They really cannot. And so that reduces the chance of students getting a scholarship when you look at how they would apply as a transfer student from a community college. So most community colleges have open enrollment. So if you meet the, the prerequisites, the basic requirements to apply, having a high school graduation uh, and the diploma and transcript translated into English is one of those things, a medical test. Uh, so it's not a competitive type of application like the one that you would experience at the university. So you go to a community college and you are motivated, but there's so many things to learn when you arrive at the new place. You're in a new country, perhaps a new language, new way of living, even the place and the way that you go to buy supplies that you need is different. Everything is different. And so you are pulled, you're strength, your energies are pulled in many directions. If you are at a community college, you are more likely to have a smooth transition into all of those changes because community college class sizes are generally smaller. Community college faculty generally want to know their students and they notice them, know them by name. In the community college system, there is a sense of community. And so you have a chance to meet people, you have a chance to learn how things go. You have a chance to practice taking classes in the US education system. And then you become very accomplished. And so in that time in the community college, you've learned these things, you've been helped along the way by a friendly community. Then you become a very strong student who's making great grades. So then your GPA is going to be quite good, but you also have the opportunity to join organizations like I mentioned, the PTK, Phi Theta Kappa. This is an honor society for students who have worked hard and who do have good grades. And when they join, it becomes something that they can put in their application to the university that demonstrates, I was a good student. I made good grades. I'm a good gamble. Because then they see, this is a successful student. This is a student who became involved in community service, which you can do easily at a community college. And so the student does things and they show up. So now the same university that before said, mm, I don't know if you're going to be a good student or not, says, wow, this is a great student. This person is eligible from, for some scholarship money. So your chances for a scholarship to the university are much greater after you have proven success in a community college system. So that's a very strong reason that I think a community college is really an especially good benefit for international students. Of course you want to do well, but it takes time. It takes a little time and some help along the way to figure out how the new system works. So when you have finished a community college and you are looking at scholarship opportunities, realize that you can transfer within the state where you are, or as I mentioned before, 
anywhere else in the United States because the associate's degree shows that you have completed. Different schools have different requirements and they will have to look at your transcript to see which of your classes match classes you would have taken there. But you can talk with advisors in the community college system. And if you have a specific school selected that you want to go to, they can guide you to the classes which we most likely to transfer there. So transferring within the state is good and your better chance for scholarships and likewise out of state. Also, there is more support for a community, for a community college international student generally. But when you're looking for what community college you would like to go to, you want to be sure that you choose one that can show they have experience with international students. They know how to help you. They know what to expect and they can guide you. You also want to see if they are friendly to you because, of course, you want help when you need it and you would like for people to be kind and friendly to you when you ask for that help. That just goes without saying. And then you want it to be personal. You want to know that when you go into the international office or wherever you would need to go for some assistance, they're going to know you when you come in and be able to help you individually. This will be different from school to school because the structures within the colleges are different. But knowing that the school has experience with international students and other students' experiences can be shared with you, that gives you confidence. It also reassures your family that you're going to be cared for where you are, that there will be people who will help you if you, if you need it. Also, you want to think about what the college life will be like. All schools are different, but within community colleges, you will find there are some community colleges which have a dormitory and a cafeteria, and others which do not, because many community colleges serve a commuter population. So what your life would be like would be different depending on whether the school has a dormitory and a cafeteria, or if international students generally live in apartments or rent rooms and houses, or find other accommodations nearby. You also would like to check and make sure that there is a standard for the faculty credentials. For instance, at Gadsden State, faculty members here must have at least a master's degree, and many have PhDs as well. So the credentialing system of the school will, will prove that they have high expectations of their faculty and provide high level quality education to their students. Also, you would need to investigate a little. Find out if the community college you're looking at offers one-on-one -on -one advising, because that means that an advisor will be assigned to you and that person will be available to you. You can make an appointment. Now we're doing them by Zoom or, or FaceTime, but we still provide one-on-one -on -one advising sessions. This is where the faculty member can find out a little bit about you. What are your goals? Where do you want to go? What do you want to study? And then they can help you make a plan for your two-year degree. If you want to go to this particular school, I know, or I can investigate and find out what they would like you to study here so that you can transition smoothly there. Finding that out one-on-one, face-to-face, -on -one, where the faculty member is interested in you and helping you succeed is something you probably would really like to have in your choice of community college. Also, you want to go somewhere where they're going to help you make the transition. You're going to need some orientation to understand how this all works here. I'm sure you are experts in the education system of the countries where you grew up and where you have studied, but ours may be a little different. So you want to make sure that the school offers assistance as you make that transition and learn those things. Another thing to look for is, are there tutoring services available on this campus? Because no matter how hard you work, sometimes a class just may be confusing to you. It may be difficult. And international students who are here on F1 visas cannot always just drop a class because they must keep a minimum number of hours. So you need to see, if I start struggling, if I don't understand, and I'm sure there are courses I would need this in, but if you don't understand, are there tutoring opportunities available where you can get the help you need to understand and then move on and succeed? Also, what if 
you don't have access to a computer on your own? Are there computer labs available? Is there Wi-Fi available on the campus? These are important things to ask because they will affect your experience. Also, if you feel, oh my, she's talking too fast and I can't understand, maybe you would like to consider English as a second language training in order to be able to gain the strong English skills so that you can be a successful student studying in English here in the US. So you want to see, does this college that I'm looking at have an established English as a second language program? Or is it new? Are they just beginning? They might be a very good program, but your parents may feel more comfortable if they know that there is experience in that if the program has been established for some time and the faculty, the teachers in the ESL system are experienced as well. Do they have a certain level of degree such as a master's that they must have in order to be able to teach? And then thirdly, talk to the alumni. If you get a chance to talk with someone from the school, ask them if they were successful and why they think they were. That is a good way to find out. And then also, final point, if you can find out about the diversity and the multicultural nature of the college and the community that you're going into, that will make you feel more at home. It will also give you more experience with people from around the world. For example, if the community or the college offers cultural events that the community comes to the school and the school participates, that gives students a great opportunity to interact, not just with people from the United States, which they would probably hope to do while they're here, but there may be other students from other cultures, other groups in the community who would give a more rounded global view that's available right in the community of the school. Also, are there local partners in the community? Uh, for instance, there may be groups in the community who actively provide activities and invite international students to them so that they can become acquainted, so they can help them adjust, so they can be friends, so that they can learn about the students' countries and build those wonderful global ties between our countries. And then are there special events that the campus offers for the community to come in. So the campus reaching out to the community and the community reaching in. So these are things that I would recommend that you consider when you're looking at what school you would like to go to. And I recommend a community college for all of these reasons. And I'd like for you to take a moment with me and have a look at a few things about Gadsden State Community College that I think uh, you would be interested in knowing and might demonstrate this. I'm working on getting my uh, screen to share here. Give me just a moment, please. But as I mentioned, I'm from Gadsden State Community College in Alabama. And one of the first questions I usually get is, where is Gadsden, Alabama? So I have just a couple of uh, things I'd like to show you to give you that idea. You see in the map of the United States, that Gadsden is located here. We are in the southeast region. You can see that by the arrow pointing. So there are regions, and that might be another interesting way for you to explore colleges, what's available in the different regions, because while every state and every region is unique, they have some commonalities, such as weather. So we here, in the southeast region are likely to have fairly mild winters and sometimes very hot summers as well. So still, let's look at where Gadsden is. On the left side of the screen, you can see the arrow pointing to the state of Alabama. And on the right side, you see the actual state enlarged a little bit. Moving right along, you see the same one on the left. And then you can see the arrow is pointing to Gadsden, which is within a county called Etowah County, and you can see where it is located in the state. So I wanted you to have a clear idea about where that is. But what is near Gadsden? This often helps people because Gadsden is not a huge city. It's a fairly moderate, medium-sized city. But near Gadsden, you will find many other things. For example, Atlanta, Georgia, which most people have heard of Atlanta. It's a major airport in the United States. It is about two hours away, 188 kilometers. 
Conference. Also, Chattanooga, Tennessee. So already you're seeing that where we're located, we are also close to other states. Chattanooga is about an hour and a half away by car, 154 kilometers. Huntsville, Alabama, also about one and a half hours. It's fewer kilometers, but the road is not quite as direct. So it takes a little bit longer than the number of kilometers would imply. So it's 120. And then Birmingham, Alabama is the closest major city. It's about one hour away, 101 kilometers. And most of our students actually fly into Birmingham when they're coming. And we provide uh, airport pickup for our first time students. So as long as we know when you're arriving on the designated day, we can come and make your transition easier that way. So let's think about what you would be able to access in Atlanta. Many things, of course. It's a large, very modern city with a very big and high sky uh, scraper skyline. Um, it's also a place where you can see interesting things. I'm sure all of you know of Coca-Cola. Well, the world of Coca-Cola is actually located in Atlanta. It's a museum and historical site that is so interesting about how Coca-Cola came to be. And uh, it's a delightful field trip that we often take with our students. Then Chattanooga in Tennessee, another fairly large city. And we sometimes take our students on field trips for the aquarium there. It's quite lovely, quite interesting, and only one of the many attractions, just as the world of Coca-Cola is only one of many attractions in Atlanta. Moving on to Huntsville, Alabama, and we're back in Alabama. It's, it's a larger city, and it is in a city which is known for its technical research because it is where the Space and Rocket Center is located. So the space shuttle was actually built developed there. So it's a very interesting place to visit and we uh, usually make an annual trip there with our students for a field trip. Also Birmingham, a very nice city. Birmingham has the uh, one of the premier hospital systems in the state associated with the University of Alabama Birmingham there. And it is also a site which is significant in the United States civil rights uh, experience. In the 60s, Birmingham was an important place where civil uh, unrest came to light. Uh, some significant things happened there that led to more equality among the people in the United States. Civil rights was uh, really a big issue in ge our geographical region. It was a hot spot for that time in our country's history. So that's another interesting thing that's available. But I'd like to welcome you to Gadsden. We are a city which also has water. You may notice a lot of the city pictures had water in them. This region does have uh, plenty of water, lakes and rivers. We also have mountains and a lot of parks and things nearby. And you can see the main street during down Gadsden. This is the main boulevard through the town so you can get an idea of the size and uh, kind of the, the feeling of the town. Also, just about 15 minutes away from campus, our students often have picnic outings to Nakalula Falls. And uh, so this is a very pretty feature, which we uh, find our students enjoy a great deal. And then back closer to campus, a uh, famous Broad Street Bridge across the river, uh, right at Gadsden. Okay. Gadsden's a nice and friendly place. And I can tell you that from my own experience because I'm a Southerner, but I'm originally from a different state. And so when I moved to Alabama to work here in this program, it was by my choice and I found it to be a friendly, friendly place. And I know that you will too. Gadsden State Community College offers the things that you often hear about with a two plus two. We have a low cost, we have small class size, it's about 17 students to one faculty member. You have opportunities to get to know the faculty because your classes are smaller and the community college is a friendly, open place. You can have a smooth adjustment to the US educational system, as I've discussed before. You can transfer to four-year universities and there are transfer scholarship opportunities for students who are successful within Gadsden State. 
You can see we have a lot of different architecture and different things here on campus. Gadsden State Community College has a long history, and so you see that reflected. We also have multiple campuses, but our international programs are on the main campus. This building is where we're located. We have had international programming at Gadsden State since 1968. So more than 50 years of experience welcoming international students to Gadsden. In those, in those 50 years, we have had more than 6,000 students from 140 different countries right here in our small but warm and welcoming community. We offer a full service international office. We all do admissions for international students, the CVIS advising, we coordinate student activities, and we help our students get involved in the community. We have our staff ready and willing to help our students. They're also very personable. In this case, you'll see on the left, our immigration specialist. In the middle, our clerk who handles insurance and a million other things, and our program specialist who helps with our activities and special programs. So Gadsden State has a friendly campus and community. We have, at most any time, we have 30 or more countries represented within our student body. And there are more than 40 student organizations, including a Students Without Borders Club, which uh, gives us a great opportunity to learn about all sorts of cultures. Students from any culture can join, US culture as well, and we get to know one another. We also have a new organization, a global engagement club, which helps students focus more on what's going on in the world and being involved and preparing to work in that world. We do have a dormitory on campus, Fowler Hall. You can see the exterior and the lobby. You see there are some computers available to students there. We also have a cafeteria on campus. Students can gather there and uh, it's a central place that you can find students because everybody loves to eat, right? We have a nice library on our campus with uh, assistance that students need. Also some computers are located there. And on our campus, we also have the Cardinal Tutoring and Writing Center. And this is very, very exciting because in the Tutoring Center, students can receive free tutoring in any subject they're taking at Gadsden State. We have that available to students and it has made a very big difference, particularly for our international students. Let's talk for just a moment about our intensive English program because that's also another factor to consider. Alabama Language Institute, the intensive English program at Gadsden State has been in effect since 1973. You might also be interested to know that it's the very first intensive English program in the state of Alabama and one of the first in the country USA among community colleges, not among all colleges, but among community colleges. At the Alabama Language Institute, we give our students specific training in all these topics to help them prepare for college level work. So our program allows the students to get the, the English that they need specifically for college and grammar, reading, composition, speaking and listening, vocabulary, pronunciation, and yes, TOEFL preparation. We are also a TOEFL administration site. And so once each semester we give the uh, institutional TOEFL, which is more the paper-based and much less expensive than the internet-based, but we also offer the, we are a site to offer the internet-based TOEFL, and anyone can come here to take that. It's not limited to our students. We have over 70 years of teaching experience among our, our instructors that you see here. So we do have teachers who know what they're doing. Um, all of them have experience living and teaching abroad. And so they really understand our students' experience when they come here. And they're able to meet them where they are and help them achieve their goals by developing English that will help them succeed. A very exciting thing that we have offered here at Gadsden State for many years is when a student completes our intensive English program, of course, they receive a certificate. But if a student completes all of the highest level classes with A's and B's, then they do not have to submit a TOEFL score in order to enter Gadsden State Community College. That is waived for them because we know that when a student finishes our intensive English program with high grades, they are ready for college.
ready to succeed. We do have events with the community. In this case, our International Festival, which is an annual event. Um, usually three to 500 people in our community come to participate in this event. And it's an opportunity for students to showcase their countries and get to meet people in the community who are interested in knowing them. Gadsden State brings the world together. We do bring the world together from all over. It's delightful to see students from various parts of the globe becoming friends and forming relationships that last far beyond Gadsden. I like to say that we are doing international diplomacy at the local level here because there is friendliness and welcomeness and openness in our southern town. But we're building futures. Students come here because they have a goal and we can help them achieve it. Change your life change your world here at Gadsden State. We believe it's a good place to start doing that, but you need to find the school that is the best for you based on the kinds of things that you have as your objectives. So considering those things to ask about a school, to look into, you will be able to find the right place for you. And at this time, I'd like to welcome Diego and Chi back. If they are ready, I have a few questions that I would like to ask them based on the kinds of things that we've talked about here today. So um, we'll have them appear momentarily. Ah, Diego is rejoined and she, <laughs> great. Just in case someone has joined us a little bit late today, would you guys please introduce yourselves again? Uh, because we did at the beginning, but maybe someone's been able to join us a little later. So this time we'll start with Chi, how about that? Hi, I'm Chi, I'm from Taiwan. And this is my second year at Gaston State. And I'm majoring in general study. And I plan to transfer after I finish my degree. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Diego Romero. I'm from Bogota, Colombia. Um, well, this is my second year, too. And my major is business. Okay, thank you very much. I have some questions. Like I said, they're related to what I've been talking about. So um, I'd like to begin. Uh, well, let's start with Chi because you already went. We'll take turns. Chi, um, why did you choose Gadsden State Community College? The reason I choose Gaston State is because I, I measure it with the cost of the college at the United States. And I find out if I went to a four-year college, I will spend money on my tuitions. But if I come to community college and transfer, more opportunity to get scholarship from PTK or just transfer scholarship. And, and I can get my basic course knocked down with with this money, I will pay for Okay, so money is important to all of us, isn't it? Absolutely. Okay, <laughs> Diego, maybe you can share why you chose Gadsden State. Well, I chose Gadsden State, um, basically it was a lie. A lie, uh, <laughs> it was so amazing. Um, well, I, I, got, I learned English in Colombia, but it's, it's not the same, obviously. And I felt that I need more. I improved my English. So I just alive. Then I began to study at Gaston State. But the reason was money, of course, <laughs> money. And Which is a very real reason everyone experiences. Yeah. yeah. And the instructors were, well, I mean, Miss Harbin, Miss Alexis. Mr. Bagby were amazing. They were, uh, and that uh, you too, and um, Miss Candy were very friendly. Were were like a family to me. I was afraid because I never left my country, my home. So it was it was so wonderful. Thank you for that. That's wonderful. I'm going to cry. You're making me feel so excited and happy. Yeah. Um, and I'll just clarify, uh, the people who may not be familiar with us, when we say ally, it's the abbreviation for Alabama Language Institute. So Diego's talking about the intensive English program here. 
Okay, you guys have already answered my second question, so I'm going to go to the third one. Um, and it's okay because our time is probably about to run out anyway. Um, so, actually, the third one, I think you already talked about that one too. So, we'll go to the fourth one. Okay, okay. Um, what would you, as a student who's been here, uh, starting in Ally and going on for Diego or beginning in college directly. Um, what would you say to a student who's trying to decide where they want to go and they're considering community college? What would you say to them about how they could make that decision or why they might choose Gadsden State? Of course, we believe that's a great place, but they, I think they could benefit from hearing what you think about choosing a school. Well, actually, I mean, well, sometimes we, we didn't know what we want. And here at Gaza State, there are many people that can advise you. And uh, I would say, well, what is your plan? What would you, what, what were you gonna do? And then talk to advisor, talk to Miss, Miss Becky <laughs> for more information. And there are plenty of opportunities here. I mean, uh, I didn't know about the the college, to be honest. Uh, I just heard universities because they are very popular, but uh, community colleges in Colombia is not very very familiar. It's not it's not very common. And then I got this and it, it was so wonderful because uh, I didn't know how the education is here and and the way they they taught me that is is very good so I would say first what I what is your plan and what is your goal then reach for help or information and here at Kansas State, there are plenty of people that want to help you. Well, thank you. Okay. Chief, what would you say? Oh, uh, my case is different because I went to high school here, then I okay. came to college. So by, by the time I went in, I all, I'm almost already familiar with English. So I just take basic class straight. And because Gaston is a small class, so I, I have time to ask the instructor about the question on topic or homework. And they are very helpful on those topics. And also, I, I also visit the tutoring center we have in Gaston State. They are also helpful. They will help you on the topic you need. Like my topic I need is like grammar and reading. They can help me on creating my grammar and show me why it's a proper way to study. So I think Coming to Gaston is the best choice that I choose when I graduate from high school. Well, thank you. Okay, those are good answers. You guys touched on things I didn't. And now I'm going to ask one that I didn't warn you about before, but I think it's still a very good one. Uh, you've been involved in what we do here for a couple of years, both of you. So perhaps you could talk a little bit about what kind of activities you've been able to do here, not just your studying, but what other activities have you enjoyed while you've been here? So uh, we'll start with Chi this time. Okay, um, the activity that I like is the first year when I come to Gaston States, there's an event we call it River Day. And we, we went to the river and do ski and do tubing. And it's like a water event and it's safe, but it's also fun. Oh, and for another event, it's an international festival. That's where you can have learning many cultures that other people bring to Gaston States. You can learn their culture and try their food and learn their language. And if you come to United States to study English, but by joining to the Gaston State, you also can learn other culture who come also to learn the English. And you can kind of mix with each other and share your opinion. So I think it's a really helpful program that Gaston State have. Okay, thank you. And Diego? Oh, well, the first one was uh, Students Without Borders. Mm -hmm. And it was like two weeks event in lunchtime. It was so good. 
uh, I learned about, uh, I think, Oman, uh, Japan, uh, many classmates that I had. And there were so amazing. I mean, it's like a presentation. I did one. I did once. I mean, it was it was <laughs> it was so fun. It was so fun, and I love it. I love it. Then, then there are karaoke's. Well, once we did that one, it was so funny. It was a lot of food, <laughs> and it was so amazing because there are many people here, and they're friendly. They're welcoming. They're so warm. So it's 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 very good. Um, also, there is a picnic, like as you said, Miss Becky, in Nukalula Falls. I went there. It was so good. And we can play. We can we can talk. And we can learn English in without. In, oh, I mean, not in a in a room in a room, and it was so amazing. Real world English, right? Yeah. Real world. <laughs> <laughs> well, these young men are very special to us because they're part of our family now. Uh, and I know that you may have other questions. I'm afraid we're out of time. But uh, very soon in the next couple of weeks, they're going to be involved with Unibuddy uh, in connection with study in the USA. And I know that they would be happy to answer questions then. So start writing them down. Yeah, they're both nodding. See there, that's great. Well, I want to thank you very much for joining us today and for letting us talk about our experience here, but also about your future and your experience because ultimately student success is what we want. And many students have found that success by beginning at Gadsden State. But maybe Gadsden State is not what you need for your experience. And you know what, if it's not, you shouldn't come here because you need to choose the place which is going to help you accomplish your goals and be where you want to be through your education. And if we can do anything to help you find that path, we would be happy to. So thank you very much and we're gonna need to sign off now, but thanks for joining us and thank you Chi yeah. and Diego for sharing and thank you especially Hillary for helping us with the tech. Um, it's been a good day. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.